Whoa, where are we? Sorry, have I gone to the wrong one? Yeah, it's in the page, yeah. That one there? No, no, no. no. That one there. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, um, you will not notice certain similarities with the last project, um, but here goes anyway. Um, bringing a buzz to Nectar, um, this project came out of a sense that um, although Nectar had been around for a couple of years and was really, really, really good at collecting metadata, we hadn't done so very well with getting full content. Um, we'd got a very mediated service um, at the request of our research community. They felt comfortable with there being gatekeepers in place and you know, there being a fairly high degree of control. Um, but it was actually proving quite difficult to sustain this. Um, there was a bit of a nudge um, with regard to the submission of theses to Nectar because our mandate that had been put into place three years ago was about to kind of take effect. Those students that had started in January 2008 were soon to be submitting. And like everybody else, you know, we needed to do something for the REF. We have a number of objectives to the project. Um, I've spelled them all out here in detail, but essentially they're around the areas of um, embedding <coughs> Nectar into researcher workflows, enabling Nectar to talk to ethos, to be ready on the thesis side, looking to the ref, as I've said, to um, change Nectar to match our new university website, to kind of embed it visually. There's been a bit of a chat on the list I've noticed this week about, about that, and I feel quite strongly that if Nectar is to be seen as part of the University of Northampton, it must look the part as well. And since we originally developed Nectar um, three or four years ago, the university's been through two more sets of rebranding. So, you know, it's a case of keeping up with all of that. We wanted to add in some of the new, um, what I call added value services, the sorts of things that, other, that I hear colleagues do, uh, doing, and I think I want one of them. You know, I want that in Nectar. So it was kind of the idea to bring in some of those things that are not central to the function of the repository, but make it more valuable to repository users and particularly researchers. We also had objectives around, obviously around training and advocacy, and this one um, that we're all sort of engaged in now, which is collaborating with colleagues at the RSP and in the wider repository sector and dissemination and all the rest of it. So, so far, we've um, rebranded Nectar to match the university website. Um, ePrint services, who um, are responsible for the tricky things as far as Nectar is concerned. I have a very, very good technical help at the University of Northampton in West Hamwood Roy, but um, it has undoubtedly been very useful to, make, to be able to have ePrint services on hand to do the, the kind of the bigger tasks. Um, and they have been, um, Adam Field has been putting the culture extension onto our Nectar test server. Now, the way we've approached this is rather than do everything on our live Nectar, um, we've, we've chosen to do it on a test server, get feedback from researchers on that, and do the fiddling about before we actually go live with it. So the sort of things um, that the culture, the basic culture extension has offered to us was um, things like the scrolling display of images on the home page um, and reformatted item pages so that when you go into the item, you don't get a page of metadata, which as a librarian, of course, I love to see a page of metadata, but not all our arts users wish to see that. They get to see an image or there's a link to the, um, to the full text if that's what's on offer. And we've done some changes, in-house we've done some changes around the home page. For example, um, we did have a top five papers on the home page, and we've got rid of that. Mainly, it has to be said, because they didn't really change much. I don't know if other people find that. 
but we find that there's a, the, the pretty much the same papers keep coming up. And it's a little bit discouraging to everybody else. So we've changed that for a latest editions list. And we've made other minor changes um, in response to researcher feedback. For example, one of our researchers had a lot of difficulty using the search box. And so we've put the advanced search sort of Google style right beside it, you know, so that that, that type of thing, which, which you know, if that's, if that's what these guys want, let's, let's provide it. We're now um, working, or we, ePrint Services, are, are, are helping us with work um, on making Nectar ready to talk to Ethos. And we're working with the university's graduate school to put on all of the um, theses that have been produced by the University of Northampton. Now, we're in quite a good position for that in that we've only had degree award, research degree awarding powers since 2005. So we hope we can get a, at least a complete set of metadata, including abstracts. And then um, our graduate school are willing to contact alumni and ask if they can send in copies of, um, you know, for, for people who have already graduated copies of their PhD theses. So we'll have to see how that one goes. We've, um, just in the last month or two, we've taken the procedures for submitting theses electronically um, back to Research Degrees Committee and had those approved so that now submission to Nectar is a, a part, it's in the research degrees handbook. It's part of what a PhD student will do. We've made changes to data entry um, so that where, where previously with this very mediated service, everything went through a school administrator who typed in all the details, researchers can now enter their own um, work into Nectar. We still have the school administrators as gatekeepers because that's what our research committee want. And so far, 44 researchers have entered details of their work and there's something like 140 items. We're ramping up the advocacy of, in, by visits to all of the schools, trying to get in on the back of existing research meetings. Um, and where possible, make sure that the school nectar administrators are there as well so that they can answer questions too. Because these things have always, ne nectar's always been approached very much you know, as the school wishes to. We don't wish to impose sort of practices upon the schools. We want them to be, you know, we feel that buy-in is likely to be better if they can do things in the way that they've always done or that suits them best. We've, we've, the, our IT trainer has been trained up in Nectar and now offers Nectar training sessions and we've got an, a big event planned for Open Access Week this year. Um, the Vice Chancellor is coming, he promises, and we have uh, Alma Swan coming as our guest speaker, um, but the rest of it is still to be decided. As far as the value-added services are concerned, um, researchers are now notified by email when their items go live in Nectar, thanks to William Nixon for that. Um, that is actually proving to be quite successful in a, in a quiet kind of way because we're getting feedback from researchers. They're, they're noticing things. They're actually you know, engaging, I think, more with Nectar as a result of that. We've revised the Nectar bibliographies on the school research web pages. Um, the one, a uh, couple of schools were concerned that what appeared on the research page, there's a, there's a kind of a block that's, that's a, a feed from Nectar on there. It's the latest few items. Now, depending on what's been put in, it could be something that's quite out of date. So, and it could be, you know, six things from one person. And they, you know, they're saying, this looks like only one person does research. So we've changed that to pick up one thing from each division within the school. So at least there's a variety of dates and authors going on there. It's a small thing, but it, I, I really feel this, these things make a difference to researchers. This is where they see nectar. So it, we've got to get these things right. Our, our web team are currently, or 
it's in their queue of things to, um, to include the personal nectar bibliographies on staff profile pages, just as Alan was mentioning. Um, we've said how, what we want them to look like, um, and we're just waiting for that to happen. And please, if anybody has any good ideas for more things like this, then please tell us, because we'd very much like to know. Still to come, because we are only halfway through the project, are the changes for the REF. Um, we're waiting, um, I think, for e-prints, and I'm looking over at Les. <laughs> Still <getting that> <laughs> Good man. Um, to, to come up with, with something that is going to magically transform Nectar into, a, into something that can provide data for the REF, isn't it, Les? Good, excellent. And we've got the promotional campaign for our Open Access Week event is, is being planned. There are still things on my wish list. I'd love to have some better... I don't think we've quite got to grips with stats in Nectar yet. Um, and I'd very much like um, a Chris for the university. I've, my colleagues in our research office are also keen for this, and we've had lots of chat and we do talk to each other after everything we go to, if we haven't gone together, every event, everything we find out. So we're, we're you know, well in touch with each other over that. And I'd love some more staff to support Nectar, but, but here's hoping. Thank you. <laughs>